Amen. From John about 39 to 69, 30 verses, Jesus is talking about the power of God's word. And the words with power. So today, in this message, I'm going to share with you how to tap into the power. That's what we want. We all, we want to tap into the power. Because the power of God's word will allow us to live a life pleasing to God. Yes. And since we know that this is true, what should we do? We should learn how to tap into the power that allows us to live a life pleasing to God. Let me ask you a question. We're talking about tapping into the power, the word of God with power, that has power. I have to ask this question so that we all will be talking off the same sheet. How many of you think that Jesus died for you? Now, don't answer the question. I said I had to ask it. Don't, don't answer it. How many of you think that Jesus died for you? Now, let me give you the biblical answer. For God so loved the world. Well, I'm in the world. I'm not of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Now, here's where I come in. So that. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't go through life thinking that Jesus died for you, and you come telling me that you're saved, sanctified, and on your way to heaven. No, he died for the old you. He died for he died for the old you. If anyone mourn be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. He ain't died. He ain't died for he ain't died for this 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 me. He died for the only. So you, you you need to know the power of God's word with power. Now how do we tell the power the 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 power of God's words with power? All of the power of God's words are in Jesus and his word. So if you want to you tap into the power of God's word, you have got to be talking about Jesus. Something that Jesus said and his words. He just said it. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So if you want to tap into the power, you've got to get into Jesus' words. Oh, now, the outline that you have, I have three words. Revelation, wisdom, and salvation. Now, revelation... The word has to come from God because there are some Jehovah Witnesses out here that has a word 
that came from Smith. And there's some Muslims out there that has a word that had some words that came from Muhammad. And then some other words came from Buddha. And some other words came from somebody else. And some other words came from Sung Yun Moon. So we're talking about the words of Christ. If we want to tap into the power of the word. Has to be a revelation from God. Number two. Wisdom, you have to make a wise use of words. You just can't take anything out of this Bible and throw it out to the saints. I'm a new creature. I function under Jesus. I don't function under Moses. Abraham, Isaac, nor Isaiah, Jacob, none of them. I don't function under them. I appreciate them because they give me courage, they give me strength, they give me comfort to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But they don't have any power. There's nothing between Genesis and Malachi that can give you the new birth. There's nothing between Genesis and Malachi can give you the new birth. Amen. It says that, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's what he's saying. And the last one here is salvation. Now, salvation is a two-part word. See? Because we already know, or we've already read, that he's the savior of the world, and them people are unsaved. Uh-huh. He's the savior of the world, and those people are unsaved. But they are acceptable to God under the right set of circumstances. Don't go out here thinking that that, that sinner out there, he's just not saved. That's right. He's been redeemed. Uh -huh. The same blood that saved me saved him. That's right. I just had sense enough that when the preacher came by and asked me, did I believe that Jesus Christ, the son of God, that came down from heaven? Right. He was crucified for my sin. He was buried and raised from the dead. Will you believe that, Lee? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't want to go to hell. I can remember that from the morning's bench. Yeah. So, salvation is a two-part word. There he, Jesus is a savior that gives salvation. Uh -huh. Now, how many of you think that Jesus died for you? Those of us that are in the know should know that he died for the sins. I wasn't born until 1935. He died two, nearly 2,000 years ago, plus or minus. So he died for my sins. And I accepted him as my savior yes. and became a child of God, a new creature in Christ. So if you want to tap into the power, the power of God's word that has power. Now let's take a, I have an illustration at the bottom. It's Isaiah 55, 10, and 11. We know it. Isaiah 55, 10, and 11 is talking about the power of God's word. But it doesn't have any power. Ye must be born again. Have to be. You must be born again. Yes, sir. Now this tells me that God has power, but it doesn't tell me what I really need to know. I need to know how to tap into it. God has, it says he has power. 
But let me in the last sentence, let me 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 break it down so I can understand it. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth bud that it may give seeds and so and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I send it. Okay. It shall accomplish that. What's that? Oh. Which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing. What things? Listen, these are words, but they don't have any power. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. That's power. It shall accomplish that. It's unfinished. Which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing. What things? Whereunto I send it. Who did you send it to? When Jesus walked the earth, he told his disciples, I want you to go to the lost tribe of Israel. He didn't send it to them pagan, heathen, Gentile, black folks and white folks. He told them disciples, go only to the, is, am I right? He said, go only to the 10 lost tribes of Israel. But then later on, he said, uh, other sheep I have is not with this fold. I got, I, got, I, got, I got to bring them in too. Now we're getting to some power. How are you going to include me, Jesus? Whosoever believeth in me. I don't pray for the, he said, I don't pray for the world. But I pray for the one who's going to believe on me through your words. Peter. Go down to Cornelius' house. He went down there and preached to Cornelius and his family, and they were saved. Went back to Jerusalem, and the, the, the Jewish leaders got angry because he was a Jew and went down there and fellowship with them Gentiles and told them about Jesus. And they, had, they, he, he, they called him on the carpet. And then and, and, and Peter explained to him what happened about this rise Peter slaying eat. And what I call clean, let no man call unclean. Peter, I say, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. He like them Jews and Gentiles, the same. Now that's power. When Paul, when the Jewish people wouldn't listen to Paul in the 18th chapter of Acts, he went next door. Yeah. Start preaching in them Gentiles, and they believed. Then Paul got upset. He was, he, was, he was perplexed. God came to him in a vision. He said, Paul, do what I told you. Paraphrasing. Don't stop talking. Don't stop saying them words that I gave you to say. Nobody's going to come against you to harm you. I have much people in this city. You don't know who they are, but I do. Uh, Outside of Faith Temple and in the surrounding communities, there are a whole lot of people out there that Jesus Christ died for that just waiting to hear the words that God has given unto you. They just, they, that's the only thing they're doing is, wait, the only reason why they're not saved is because they haven't heard the right words. When they hear the right words and it's the Holy Spirit's job to do the convicting. My job is just to say the word. You don't want to hear them? Okay. Go ahead on. That's all right by me. So, 